take every thought captive. Now that does not mean what you think it means. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse five says, and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Now, most of the time when you hear somebody quoting this verse, they say every sinful, every impure thought, every lustful thought that comes in your mind, you've got to arrest it, you've got to take it captive, you've got to lock it up because we have to make sure that we know how to handle these thoughts. And while that may be true, what exactly did Paul mean in this text when he said taking every thought captive. Now, as always, if we just take a little bit of time to look at the context, we will see that this verse means something different more than likely than what we've been taught. Verse three, it says, for although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. So what Paul is saying is that even though we are in these human fleshly bodies and we are in a battle, we don't use fleshly ways to win. Now, what is it that we are up against as believers? He tells us that in the next verse. He says, since the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. So I want you to notice here a few things that Paul is referring to. He first mentions this idea of strongholds, and then he mentions any sort of arguments that are raised up against the knowledge of God. He then talks about taking these thoughts captive. So what Paul is talking about here is not necessarily in this immediate context that we need to think or, or take every little thought that comes in our mind and arrest it. He is actually talking about the thoughts, the strongholds, and the arguments that the world system is launching against the knowledge of God. And he's saying the way that we disarm this, the way that we help people get free from strongholds in their life, that they have been bound up because of the stinking thinking, right? The, the arguments of this world, whether it's materialism, whether it is secularism, whether it is humanism, whether it is feminism, whatever it is that this world is launching against the message of God, it is this that we are committed to warring against. And the way we do that is not the way the world does it. We do that through truth. So just to be clear, the immediate context here is not referring to our thoughts that we have to take captive. Paul is referring to the thoughts, the arguments, and the strongholds that are in the community and in the society around him that we as believers must take those arguments and those thoughts captive and those things that are lofty that are uh, being raised up against the knowledge of God. Now, does that mean that we should not try to take and control the thoughts that come in our mind? Yes, it does. I just don't know if I would use this particular verse to prove that, but while we're here, let me give you some very specific ways that you can take these evil, sinful, impure thoughts captive. The first step that I really want to encourage you to do is I want you to make a list, yes, an actual physical list of all of the categories of sinful thoughts that come in your mind, whether it may be lust, whether it may be anxiety, whether it may be worry, whether it may be doubt, whether it may be jealousy, whether it may be thoughts of low self-esteem, whatever those categories are, the first step is to simply write them down. Step number two is to eliminate any sort of outside influences that might trigger these impure thoughts. I mean, let's be honest, if you can keep the thought from getting into your mind in the first place, that's the easiest and quickest way to take that thought captive. So if you know that you're struggling with lust, you may need to stay off of Instagram because when you go there, you start looking at people's profiles and you start checking out uh, pictures that they may not have a lot of clothes on or whatever it is, you might need to actually stay off of that because that is triggering you to lust. Or you may want to stay off social media if every time you go on there, you are, uh, envying and you're coveting things that you think other people have that you don't have, the life that they have, that you want to have, all of these different things, right? So if there are certain triggers that every time you do these things, it's causing a flood of impure, ungodly thoughts to come into your mind, you want to eliminate those as much as possible. Now, the third step is I want you to make a list 
of all of the scriptures that are related to each one of the categories that you listed in step number one. Now, we don't have enough time in this video to break them all down, but let me just give you, we'll just use lust as an example. So here is a sample list that I made. Matthew chapter five, verse 28, but I tell you, everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Then 1 John chapter two, it says, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And then Job chapter 31 verse one, which is where the company Covenant Eyes got their name from, it says this, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look with lust at a young woman. First Peter chapter two, dear friends, I urge you as strangers and exiles to abstain from sinful desires that wage war against the soul. And then finally, Romans chapter eight, verse six, it says, now the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Now, there is a very, very important reason why I want you to make a list of all of these scriptures, because that's gonna lead us into step number three, and that is to meditate and memorize all of these scriptures. Now. There's a reason why I'm asking you to do this because what you're doing is you are feeding the Holy Spirit. You are giving the Holy Spirit ammunition to do what he is going to do, which is going to bring these, spirit, uh, these scriptures back to your remembrance. The Bible says that when the spirit of truth comes, he will remind you of all the things that I've told you. If you do not first put these scriptures into your spirit, you're not giving the Holy Spirit anything to draw from whenever you are experiencing temptation because you'll be there left with your own thoughts, your own desires and worldly wisdom. What you want to happen every time you have a thought that comes into your mind is you want the spirit to be working in the background automatically on your behalf without you even having to do anything. He just kicks in and he's immediately gonna bring a, a, a scripture back to your remembrance to combat that negative thought. This is exactly what Jesus did whenever he was tempted. Every time Satan tried to tempt him, there was a scripture that came to Jesus and he quoted that scripture in the midst of that temptation. Listen, you may have to make some flashcards, some three by five flashcards. You may have to put some sticky notes on your computer, uh, in your car, at your desk, whatever it is, right? On your mirror in the morning, whenever you get dressed and brush your teeth, whatever, just so that you can consistently get these scriptures in your spirit. You can start to memorize them. I cannot tell you the importance of this particular step. The next thing that I want you to do every single time you have an impure thought that comes in your mind is immediately start praying, right? Ephesians 6, 18, it says, pray at all times in the spirit with every prayer and request and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Listen, this doesn't have to be some deep prayer. It doesn't have to be some super theological prayer where you're quoting all these verses and you're using all these fancy theological words. No, what you're trying to do here when you pray, literally you're asking the Lord to just cleanse your mind, to replace your, your that, that impure thought that just came in there with something that, uh, that God would be honoring, a God honoring thought. And all you're doing is you're gonna continue to pray, continue to pray, continue to pray, until that thought that came into your mind is arrested, it's taken captive, and uh, you are actually starting to feel as though you're experiencing victory over that particular thought. Now, the final step in this process is to replace that thought with a godly thought. Notice what Paul says in Philippians 4, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true. Now, let's just stop right there. Half the thoughts that come into our mind are not true. So here you are on social media, you're coveting all this stuff that you think you want that everybody has, when in actuality, is it really true that they have a perfect life, that they have a perfect wife, that they have perfect kids, that they have all this money, right? Is that really true? Now let's keep going. Whatever is honorable. So you want to replace that thought that is dishonorable with something that is honorable, right? So when you have these thoughts, let's say a thought of a beautiful woman comes in your mind, first and foremost, that's not sin to think about a beautiful woman, but when you start thinking about what you're gonna do with her and she's not your spouse, right? Then that is where you wanna to try to replace that with an honorable thought. Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence 
and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. So to recap, step number one, you're gonna make a list of all the categories of impure thoughts that come into your mind. Step number two, you're gonna take steps to try to eliminate any sort of worldly, ungodly influences that may trigger those thoughts so that you can hinder the thought from getting into your mind to begin with. And then step number three is you're now gonna take each one of those categories from step number one, and you're gonna find as many scriptures as you can and make a list of all of those scriptures for each category. Step number four is you are going to meditate and memorize every single one of those scriptures. Step number five, you're immediately going to respond to that negative thought with prayer so that you can combat that right away and you're asking God to help you move past this negative thought. And then step number six, you're gonna immediately replace that thought thought with a God honoring thought. I trust that when you do these things, listen, you will have more success. You'll have more control over your mind and you'll be able to renew your mind as Paul said in Romans chapter 12. So if you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe, check out some of the other videos on this channel while you're here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.